about what we're going to talk today. Um, first, we're going to give our client background. Then we're going to discuss the, um, the problem. Then we're going to discuss the phases that we underwent, which was the research and data collection phase. Then proceeded on to do the modeling. And lastly, we did an analysis on everything collected. Lastly, we're going to um, talk about the conclusions that we drew and finally give some recommendations for further implementing this type of project. Uh, very quickly, our client actually was the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Uh, it was selected in 1914 to be the headquarters of the 11th, got the 11th district uh, of uh, the United States. It's one of 12 regional reserve banks in the uh, central banking system. And our early project sponsors here in this couple right now that help us out throughout the whole process. All right, so um, the problem now. Um, in 2006, Dr. Seems um, did a study about what factors drive innovation? Which ones are the economic factors that drive that growth? And so um, one of the papers that he wrote was Strengthening Globalization, the Invisible Hand, and What Matters the Most. So in that paper, he addressed some of the things that do drive it, such as it was a 3D some policies and then procedures, things as such. And um, recently, he actually gave another TED Talk on the same topic. So that's Dr. Steve right there giving a TED Talk. And so we took on the project, and we are taking it on. We stopped in 2006, and that's where we are picking up. We're picking up from 2006 all the way to 2013 and seeing if anything changes. So as we know, there was a huge economic crash in 2008, and we have to consider that and seeing what new factors come through, but also seeing if any factors change, whether they um, affect innovation in one country or what if they don't affect it in another one. All of these things come into play. And so the approach that we're mainly taking is we are getting factors that circle around people, ideas, and things. And these are factors that are based off of his original study, as well as um, some other research that Miguel and I did. Uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit later, how we determine the factors that we use. But within that, we want to see how it impacts the economy, the investment climate, the people, ideas, and things that are around to invest in. And finally, how that shoots out the economic growth and truly impacts the innovation that takes place. So the first step that we had to do was to collect the data that we were going to use uh, for the project. We need to collect a, a large amount of different economic indicators, things that could potentially tell us uh, why certain countries have higher GDP than other countries. Uh, there's lots of indicators out there. There's, there's hundreds of thousands per each website. We chose to use uh, the World Bank the human development reports, those two websites, and the different indicators we chose were based off of things in Dr. Seam's report or different indicators that Dr. Fomby from the economics department uh, would suggest to us. We ran a few, you know, basic baby linear regressions in Excel. Uh, with that, we found another few indicators that we, we chose to use. One was, um, one we wouldn't have never thought of, a mortality rate for children under five per thousand live births, just different things to try to give uh, our model a larger scope. So after we collected all the data, it was important to, to cleanse the data. Uh, what this means is when we collected the data, a lot of countries were missing a lot of either years. Uh, there, were, there was a lot of missing pieces throughout uh, when we imported into Excel. So what we had to do was we had to go through and we had to delete both a lot of countries and a lot of indicators. These are some of the countries that we had to delete just because um, there was no data for them. It was, it was either sparse or there just wasn't enough. Um, there are a few that we just decided to delete because for different reasons. This one, we decided to delete Macau. Uh, Macau is a province in China, but because it's such a big gambling hub, and so many Chinese businessmen gamble there, they decided to uh, focus. You know, they have a GDP just, just for the city because it's so great. Decided to delete that one. All in all, we deleted about 100 uh, different countries and provinces. There were about 33 provinces that were listed uh, North America, Europe, Asia, amongst others, different regions. And then there was a total of 77 countries that there was just not, there was just not enough to, to run models for. The, the models would, would not work out. All right, so now in the software um, that we would use to solve the issue, to solve the problem, so we were given different approaches or given different suggestions on what approaches we could take. We were offered neural networks or principal components analysis as well as just basic linear regressions. And um, our project sponsor recommended that we use JMP12, which is a SAS affiliated program, and it's pretty user 
friendly, but it also gives a very, that, um, a very deep and a very thorough analysis about the inputs that you put in. So um, we were able to organize that data very well, and one Excel sheet that we organized was able, we were able to use it across the analysis that we did through it. So um, also in deciding which analysis we were going to do, we, we had been doing some linear regression, but we wanted to take it further. So what happens when you put more than one variable, up to 50 at a time, into the, into the system and have it shoot out essentially what correlation it has, what relationship it has to that in, in economic growth that drives that innovation. So the two that we decided to use via J and B12 were clustering to get um, common clusters of countries together and seeing what their commonalities were. So we decided to cluster them by GDP per capita. And next, um, we also ran a principal components analysis which ran the correlations of um, the indicators versus whatever you wanted to run them against. So we did a couple of runs running them against GDP as well as running them against each other and seeing what factor, um, what relationship it had to each other. Next up, we also wanted to do a different type of analysis. So we decided we were going to take the data and development analysis approach and we were able to do that through um, Dr. Barr's Pioneer program, which he graciously let us borrow. And what the DEA does, um, I'm going to talk about it more later, but it measures efficiencies along a frontier curve, and that frontier curve would be that economic efficiency. So um, first, as we talk about clustering countries, as Miguel mentioned, we got rid of a lot of countries, and we finally centered around 101, 151 countries sorry, that seem to have more or less complete data, or at least complete enough to where we could do something with it and manipulate what was missing. So, we decided to um, group our clusters by GDP per capita. That way it takes into consideration the population and it's scaled a little bit more. Um, that way we also don't have to standardize it as much. So here as you can see um, is a model of how JMP works. So in the Y columns is where we input what we wanted to organize it by. And then we wanted to, or what factory we wanted to order it by, sorry, label it by. So for us, we wanted to label it by the countries and then we were going to organize it by GDP per capita. Here is a sample um, cluster. As you can see, there are a huge amount of countries centered here, and these are mostly countries which we would consider in a higher up cluster, and those countries have a lower GDP per capita than many others. So for example, you have Iran, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, the Russia, and um, a couple of other ones. Then over here you have some of the ones that have a higher GDP, and as you can tell, GDP per capita, sorry, as you can tell, those clusters start getting smaller. So that shows something about how there are more countries that are currently stuck in a lower GDP per capita um, category than there are ones in the higher ones. And this clustering really helped us in applying it to the principal components analysis. That way we can then compare and see what um, factors really had an impact in that economic growth. <coughs> and here, as you can see, is another way of just seeing the, um, the clustering. Again, the clusters are organized by the colors, specific ones. Those are the countries that typically have a lesser GDP and GDP per capita. And then it follows through. Um, the one that had the highest one in this case, this was a 2006 model. This was Luxembourg. So while I only focused a lot on the uh, clustering aspect, I decided to focus on the principal proposed analysis. And I wish he was here so I could thank him, but Dr. Hasler was very uh, pivotal in helping to explain, explain this to me. And he explained what principal components was very simple to me. It's, it's finding correlations between, between, at least for us, finding correlations between indicators. <coughs> and so let's go ahead and we'll take a look. So this is how we would, would input it. This is the program we ran at JMP. And so we chose, you know, you select, analyze, uh, principal components. And it, and it pulls up all the all the columns we have in the Excel sheet. And if you're like me, okay, well let's try to do them all at once. Well, that doesn't work. JMP didn't like that. So the sweet spot we found was about 15. Uh, we, we measure up there Y columns GDP uh, per capita, and then we, we do about uh, 15. So here it was agricultural land percentage, all the way down to life expectancy of birth. No particular order. You know, we felt randomizing them might help us find correlations a little bit better. And then we we weigh them by their populations. Uh, this was all suggested by Dr. Hausler. And so what we come up with is, is this is this chart. And, and so we get this, this three different plots. We get a 90 value plot, uh, 
a scatter plot, and this is the one we're going to focus on. Um, this is the one that our, all of the uh, principal components we did was, was based on. It was supposed to come one arrow at a time, but I'll, I'll go with it. So this mean, uh, what these lines mean is the closer two lines are to being zero degrees, so like let's say here, GDP per capita and electric power consumption, that indicates a very strong positive correlation. Now let's take a look at um, these that are almost 180 degrees away from each other. So agricultural land, percentage of land area, and then life expectancy of birds, mobile cellular subscriptions, those have uh, a very strong negative correlation to each other. And then the closer uh, the closer the lines are to, to 90 degrees indicates almost no correlation. And so what we did is we would we would find them, record them, and then the strong uh, the strong positive and strong negative ones, uh, we, we keep on recording. So what are the results we found? Well, real quick, this is just a, a 3D, a 3D uh, graph of the principal components. So the results we found were the strong positive correlations, and this was from 2006 to 2013. There was, there was hardly any, any variance. GNI per capita, uh, public spending on education. You see, education is very important in predicting GDP. Uh, sanitation was important, uh, human development index, and uh, technology, using electricity, secure internet. These were the strongest correlations to GDP. Strong negative correlations to GDP. Uh, permanent cropland was an interesting one. Permanent cropland, uh, percentage of your land area. Mortality rate, like I mentioned, uh, under five per, thou per thousand live births was a very strong um, negative correlation. And time required to start a business, the higher it went, uh, the lower the GDP went. All right, next up we're going to talk about the data and development analysis. And so the idea with the data and development analysis is that we were going to cluster the countries, then we were going to apply those cl clusters over to our analysis to principal, um, principal components as well as data and development. Unfortunately, with DEA, we did not have as much luck as we had hoped. Um, First of all, this is how you put it. It's very similar to Ample, but when we input it in, it gave us um, a different, I guess, a different answer than we were expecting. So the what the information that we put in was actually our benchmark area. So the provinces that we took that Miguel talked about, such as North America, South Asia, things like that. So we can have something to compare the main um, analysis to. But unfortunately, that didn't go as planned. Um, when we got answers back, we got answers that were fragile countries had the same economic correlation as did North America, and we kind of didn't see that as it made sense. So then we decided we were going to apply weights to the variables. Well, when we applied weights, then we got answers such as this, that nothing was hitting the frontier, that efficiency frontier. So essentially what it was telling us is that the um, there was no strong correlation between that GDP per capita and the um, the factors that we were inputting in. So we couldn't apply that anymore. We had to stick to the original idea of just applying it without weights. And overall, we couldn't get as much data as we wanted from this particular model. However, it was helpful in seeing that overall, we need more complete data to fully see what factors and what indicators will help drive this economic growth. So in conclusion, um, comparing it back to Dr. Singh's model, we were pretty consistent with the um, with what he derived in his previous studies in the sense that you need education, you need financial markets, you need um, information technology structures to sustain that growth. We um, found some relative um, factors that Miguel explained and then we also noticed that indicators changed through time. Just from 2006 to 2013, some indicators didn't have the same weight as they had previously. But we also need to notice that countries change through, that, through time and what they do. And so these are some of our recommendations for future groups to take on this project. I know we're running close to the time, so I'll let you guys read those. Okay. Um, we just hope that next time that we'll have more time to collect the data, a better experience with the software, and even more experience with other software that can solve it, and um, more time to do it, and then just understanding the project better from the beginning, having a better understanding of where you're going to, and just better data, complete data from the beginning. So any questions? Okay, we have time for about, we have about one minute, and then the other group.
Sorry, good setup. Um, so did you use all 151 in the DEA as well? Um, no, I separated them. I had to take them out one by one. I tried many different ways. It kind of shut my computer down several times, so I just had to stop at some point. But um, no, we scaled it down to 33 at most. Good. What do you think the uh, most insightful thing is that you all have? Okay, but, you know, from the strong positive correlations, investment in, in health and health care, uh, investment in technology, investment in education are the three, the three biggest strong correlations. And we found when we looked at, um, when they only ran the clusters, we went back and looked at the, the low clusters and the high clusters. And the difference between those three factors I just mentioned was incredibly significant. And it's just really interesting how it